I was away for the weekend and my mother rang and said um, something awful has happened. There's been some form of explosion and we can't get hold of your brother. Um, but he'll be fine, don't worry. And I said, well, have you tried to ring him? And she said, um, yes, but his phone is, is off. And I remember very clearly saying to her, you need to know that he's dead. Um, I instinctively knew that he was killed. On October 12th, 2002, blasts ripped through two nightclubs in Bali, Indonesia, killing 202, including 28 Britons and injuring scores more. Sportsman Peter Record was among the victims. Knowing Pete, he would have he would have phoned us immediately. You know, he wouldn't have let us wait. Um, and then we got the news from friends of his, you know, that he had indeed been killed. The Bali bombs were a watershed for the country, which has the world's largest Muslim population, forcing the secular state to confront the presence of violent extremists. In the years following the attacks, over 600 suspected militants were arrested and many convicted and jailed. Three al-Qaeda-aligned men convicted of being the ringleaders of the attacks were executed in 2008, whilst the suspected mastermind, Ridwan Izamuddin, or Hambali, is detained in Guantanamo Bay. Finally, ten years on and around the world, tributes and memorials have been held to mark the anniversary of the attacks. In Australia, where 88 people were killed, a sombre service in Parliament House remembered those who died, led by Governor-General Quentin Bryce. How proud we can be of all those who played their part. It was a time that changed them, indeed, all of us. Meanwhile, in Bali itself, senior members of all major Indonesian religions gathered to remember the dead and as a show of solidarity against the extremists who've targeted their country in the past. This remembrance is a valuable opportunity to renew, to reiterate our collective commitment to strengthen the voice of moderation, of tolerance, of mutual understanding among different communities.